He's the studio manager. He's like, yeah, I'm in my office. You gotta take inventory. Yeah. And you gotta sign people in and out. It's, it's a hard job. Someone's gotta do it. Check, check, check. Level, level, level. So Vacationer started in about 2010. And it was sort of two things. I wanted to make music that wasn't terribly loud because the music at the time that I was making was terribly loud and I was constantly having my vocals compete with really loud music and then it just ended up being very uh, taxing on myself physically. I just reached a point where like, I kept losing my voice and just felt really run down by the music that I was playing and not totally satisfied by the music I was creating and wanted to make a conscious shift into music that wasn't as aggressive. And so that was kind of the philosophy behind the approach to vacation and music. And I really wanted to learn more about how to make electronic music. I'm Ken Vasoli, our band is Vacationer, and our album is Cherish. What I want to do with the music is transport myself and the listener to a place that is just a lot more relaxing and carefree than the world that I live in. But I think that the difference on the newest record compared to the older, maybe lyric material is now it's grounded more in reality and it's grounded further away from just escapism and trying to escape the problems of real life and actually addressing the issues that I have head on because I think reality has hit me harder in these last two, three years than it ever has. And instead of shying away from that, I really did want to confront them and also bookmark them in a way that is outlining the lessons that I can learn from this time. I am happy that I'm honoring the real thoughts that I'm having and, put, and presenting them in a way that still feels like Vacationer. Quick one to start off? Sure. Yeah. <laughs>
I love sampling vinyl. And to be honest, this project was kind of born out of sampling on vinyl and like my mentors were showing me the ropes, putting together these first few records with me. It really like blew my mind when I first saw them chop up a record. I don't know, in the context of songwriting, it had just never occurred to me. Yeah, sometimes like when you give it like, it just has that like hip hop tempo when you slam it all the way down. Woo. Keep it simple, stupid. To begin. I never pitch correct anything. That's one thing that's important to me is to leave flaws, especially in vocal pitch. I'll usually mumble something, yeah, and then I'll just try to like keep track of the syllables in my mm -hmm. head, mm -hmm. and then usually there will be something that sounds like a word in there, yeah, and then I'll just try to like work my way backwards from that word. Mm -hmm. I'm actually uh, filming right now, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, dude, I'm really excited. It has that that sweet nostalgia of like some of my favorite music docs too. I'm here to destroy this fucked up system. This loop today, I think, is the energy that I want to have on this record. I do feel like getting back to some boom bap inspiration and just sampling some things and just immediate gratification. It's a good shot in the arm for this process. So this thing, I found it originally because it's the effect that's on Johnny Greenwood's guitar in Paranoid Android, okay. the Radiohead song, where it's like this, like, it like, like does this like crazy like filtering thing. So that's where I was like, what, what does that? And it's like, oh yeah, that's super impossible to get a piece of gear. And then I started looking up more and it's like, apparently Daft Punk used this for their like famous like French filter sound like all over the place. But it's just like the best filter. I'm actually like laying everything down. Yeah. Like how I want it. For now, I still just have it in this loop just to like feel like what the bass line is gonna be. Cause like, it's just to get a quick good sound and then just get a quick good loop, you know? That's the nice thing about Ableton is like you just record a big long thing and then like the last, you know, 16 bars felt good. So I just yeah. loop that. So here we are, we're in Center City, Philadelphia at my buddy Tori's studio. We do primarily drum tracks here. There's no real time in it, it's yeah. you like being yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, yeah. which is beautiful. Totally, and it's supposed to be like almost jazz um, looseness, you know, like jazz boundaries for the, yeah. for the timing. So like, it's, it's really building on this one. I write a lot of the parts. I think the most contribution has come from Rhino on drums. And I think that's just because that's where I leave the real estate open. It's nothing to take away from the other guys because they're so creative and bringing every bit of creativity to the table when I need them. Okay, 
So good. Just get in one more just for, yeah. just for the hell of it. Yeah, I got it. Because you're on point. My thing is I think I get very ahead of myself with writing their parts because I have all the instruments sitting around and if I hear something in my head, I get instantly antsy to put it down. Yeah, I love that you just like let it out like on this one, you know, like it's got the most rhino on it. You know? so once you started giving me the conducting, I was like, okay, I, I feel exactly where this is. Yes, yes. So good. <laughs> love Comes First, the first song on the record. I even had this kind of idea in my mind that I, I might want to write the songs in the chronology that they appear on the record because I heard that Weezer Pinkerton did that. I wasn't able to do it. And that song was really inspired by like, like a Swedish ambient group called Tape that I was listening to a lot. I mean, I was listening to tons of Bill Evans when I was making this record. And so just very sparse, a minimal piano and one instrument, two instruments at a time and long spaces where notes resonate and you can hear the atmosphere and creak from the bench. Like, I, I was really getting off on that kind of thing. I wasn't setting out to make long songs, but I did want to break myself from any kind of constraints of just yeah, like yeah. two minute beat bangers. I wanted it to be ambient if it wanted to be, go into a minute long beat if I wanted to. I just wanted to run the gamut of everything that I was feeling. <laughs> Yeah, we'll find a place for it somewhere. And that song, Dialogue, is for Lena. And that song is just how we've been together so long and are so comfortable with one another that we have a shorthand that it reaches beyond just speaking to each other. After lunch. Mm -hmm. Treat. Thanks, babe. Do you want some bread? No, it's okay. <laughs> I, I don't think she likes me <laughs> talking too much, like in the best way possible. Does she know that song's for her? Yeah, oh yeah, big time. absorbing pain we can talk with our dialogue feel it grow near now we can watch them closing in i'm not being nonchalant no reason to cross a lot we can talk with our dialogue to low-end energy, like, and I'm listening for it, like, in pretty much every music. Mm -hmm. 
this just sounds right to my ears, even if it is a little bit wrong and like on paper, like overcrowding a little bit. Having too much of a heavy hand sometimes, I don't know, it, it's probably what makes it a little bit lo-fi and not professional slick kind of like quality but I end up listening to more of that stuff so my ear is just comfortable with it and so I have to like use this scale of like which is like really going to benefit the music. This one. It's feeling good. Things are pretty much on track since you last saw me. I'm about halfway through the record process. This feels like a much more exciting and leisurely way to make a record than in the past of just like, oh shit, it's been two years, it's been three years, we gotta get something out. And what appeals to me is just being up here and like just making inarguably beautiful music. And that's all I wanna do is just put like, put enough work and love into this record that when someone hears it, there's no arguing that, it, that it's not beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I already got engaged to Lena right before you saw me last. We celebrated our 10 year anniversary of our first vacation record. It's been 10 years. Cheers. That's, oh, that's crazy. So we had all the homies over here and that was really nice. 10 years. Woo! I love real stuff. I mean, that's the thing is like plugins are great, but like having the ability to route stuff out of Ableton into like just old ass good gear, it's the whole vibe with you. And it's just like nice to have a, like a teach yourself how to fish philosophy with making music, I think, because then you're just never shackled to anything. Like there's never an excuse of why you can't be making music. I love the way that these pre-masters came out, but then like the more I listened to it, like this section just kept bothering me and bothering me. It was just like, it just feels like, I don't know. I thought it was something with the drums, but now the drums feel good, but it just feels like it needed, needed something. And the Rhodes, I don't use it enough. I and mean, it's like, whenever I put Rhodes in there, it always it is like really welcoming in the mix and not disturb the rest of the pre-master. The rest of it sounds gorgeous. It's just, it's one little section needs a little, little jacket. And then like real producers are gonna see this and be like, fucking this guy. Cool, happy. I just wanted to conclude the record and summarize where I go from here, here on out, which is the final song on the record. And ultimately I just want to be constructive and I want to be a better person. I want this to be things that I can look back on and say, my mom was driving this point home. So really, this is your last chance to focus on it because no one else is going to do it. You know, you have to do it yourself now. I kind of always have a song for my dog on every record. And that one, every time I would sit down at the piano, Cheryl would just come and like sit under the bench or right behind me. He loves the piano, but that one in particular, even anytime I just start playing the intro lick to it, he just comes in, it's like his theme song. While that song's not about him, I did write it in the perspective of singing it to him. So he's, his name's not in it, but it's directed as a conversation to him the whole time from behind the piano bench. So I'm talking to my dog in that song. Here on out. Yeah, here on out. <laughs>
Oh my god, this has been a long one. Maybe we'll even do some flanging at some point today. Oh dude, is that bad? I have to do some tape flange on the whole mix today. I try to never have regrets once I finish a record. There are like dumb things that like, I won't even like bring them to light, but there's just like minuscule details that I realize that I left in that most people that are great producers do not leave in. How like much noise do you want to keep? All of it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, I do kind of puff my chest, like whatever, you know, like rough around the edges, punk rock. Like default. Just what it's easy. Yeah, it's like my default here. My whole philosophy is yeah. like, from the minute we're putting things up, it's like, it should start to sound like this, Same. what we're doing, yeah. right? Like, is Good in, good out. Thank you, let's open up the next one. Yeah. I think that a lot of the records that I love, if I really try to notice all the little imperfections on it, I could probably make a huge list, but it's, I don't think that you're conscious of those things if you love the soul of a record. And I do love the soul of this record, so I can pretty much forgive any mistakes that are on it. That sounds great to me. Let's print that. Yes, please. We made it. That's it, man. My brain has not been able to fully relax or celebrate the completion of this record until like the final, you know, decimal point of the file number is like put on there. Just because I came so far and just, you know, my brain just kept ticking with like, not this, then I gotta fix that, fix this, and then, then it's a record. If there is a takeaway just to appreciate life and appreciate the ones you love as much as you can. That is unbelievably beautiful. You cool. nailed that right out the gate, man. And to really absorb the lessons that are worth keeping. Fantastic. Cool. If there's anything that I want to 
approve upon myself, it's really like showing the people that I appreciate how much I appreciate them. And that's probably the story of this record. That might be the end of the recording process and mixing process as we know it. And that would be nice. Fantastic. That was a really, really good thing.